stretched him out and fought him like a dragon. But we finally got that stallion home. We traded him for four sections of prime bench land. Five sections, and it was all raw. I traded a week later for the Burnt Tree Meadows. Now, I was getting to that. Now that's cowboying. Yeah, no cows. Ah, oh, heck, cows are just an excuse to keep horses around. Well, I think it sounds terribly romantic. Wild horses at dawn, Mountain Meadow, view all the way to tomorrow. 1,500 pounds of wild animal tearing your arms out of the sockets. <laughs> Nothing too good for a cowboy. Well, it's time. Those broomtails should be up in the Fawnee Meadows, fattening up for winter. Already, huh? Just waiting for a couple of wily cowboys to dab a noose around their necks. Uh, I guess we could spare a few days. Could you? Oh, yeah, we go every year. It's not much to do until hay. Well, have fun. Seems to me we didn't go horse hunting last year. We didn't? Mm -mm. You were off doing something or other. Oh, yeah. Getting married. Happy anniversary, partner. Richmond P. Hobson, Jr., Ann Handel Phillips, and Gloria McIntosh Hobson were real people. And for a short period of time, in the wilderness halfway between Vancouver and the Yukon, they worked to carve out the largest cattle ranch in the world. That part is true. Judged. I marked it down myself, September 12th. But Pan used my calendar for bog roll way back in uh, March. September 11th. Sure, but you, you calculated from after midnight when we legally consummated it. You got the minister out of bed at 6 o'clock in the morning of the 11th. We consummated before breakfast, remember? Of course I remember. I... Bacon, sausage, eggs. Over easy. Yeah, look, I'll take you to Vanderhoof. Best room at the Fraser. When you get back from horse hunting, it's haying. After haying, it's roundup. Then it's the beef drive. Perfect. We'll celebrate after we bring in the herd. The whole point of an anniversary is to celebrate it on the day. Not at some booze-up at the end of a cattle drive. You're right. We'll celebrate after the booze-up, when everyone's gone home. I'll go tell Pam. That's one of those annual must-do commitments, you know, like, uh, like Christmas. So's horse hunting. And you're gonna skip it two years in a row. Come on, you're not making this any easier. Let me give you a little advice about anniversaries. Anniversaries are like rocks in a river. You let a woman stop swimming and grab a rock, and she's going to look around and take stock of where you've been and where you're going. Then your natural flow is interrupted. Mm. Much as you are interrupting mine. We can't go to Vanderhoof. Whatever you say. we need is a spring getaway. Now, if we left right after branding, we'd catch those horses on their way up the high country. And if the muskeg didn't swallow us, the black flies would eat us alive. An anniversary every two years. Well, the Olympics are every four years. Hallie's Comet is every 76. No, there are just certain things that are important to a woman. I hear that Arab mare's still running with them. She'd cozy up real nice to our stallion. 
Okay, next year, I'll take you to Vancouver. The Sylvia Hotel. Best room in the house, right on the water. And it better be right on the water, Rich. Because if you skulk out of our first anniversary, I'll push you out the window on our second. You're taking a woman wild horse hunting? It's not exactly what I had in mind, either. You're welcome to come along, too, if you like. I'd rather eat ground glass. No, no, you and the wife, go ahead. She can't build a loop and you can't track a train, but there's plenty I can do around here. Have fun, Gloria. We'll try. You'll wring each other's necks trying. And you sure as heck won't catch any horses without me. Partner. Ah, oh, he'll get over it. Hey. We'll be together. Alone, and that's what counts. Moving. Haven't seen any horse sign yet. Oh, come on. Come on, we at least have a picnic. It's so pretty here. Well, there's an even better spot just ahead. Ben and I always stop there. I'm very hungry. Oh, why didn't you say so? Here. Jerky in the saddle. Your horse hunting now. Come on. I'm not chasing you! Look around, Gloria. What'd I tell you? Huh? Best room in the house. <laughs> okay, first order of business is coffee. I can do that. No, 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 no. Coffee and fire are my responsibility. Well, traditionally, anyway. We'll invent our own traditions. Rich? You brought a camera. Of course. You can do better than that, handsome. Show me some of that cowboy charm. Now that's the man I married. It's important for us to remember these times so we can take stock of where we've been and where we're going. <laughs> Smile. What does it look like I'm doing? Plinking gophers. What for? I guess he's grumpy. Well, I'm starving. He hasn't even lit the stove yet. You're the cook? What's for dinner? I'm going up there. Well, he's not gonna shoot you. you gopher head. Go on. Go! Mr. Phillips? Mr. Phillips, I'm coming up. Oh, no, 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 don't pour it yet. Why not? Because. Well, you gotta pour a little bit of cold water in it first. It settles the grounds. Watch. Let it sit. Shouldn't we turn those? My spruce chickens are famous. Why does the men suddenly start cooking when they come into a forest? Uh, guess it's the hunting instinct. Some hunter. He killed those with a club. 
Well, it's the only chance I get to use my five iron. <laughs> nice touch. I think maybe I should put up the tarp. Let's sleep under the stars. Put it up now. now. If we go out there, we'll be soaked. If we stay here, we'll be damp. Well, maybe it'll clear up one morning. And we can ride out at first light and probably make it all the way to Saddle Hump Mountain. Or we could get up late, go for a swim, and enjoy ourselves. Last time Pan and I went, we covered almost 80 miles in two days. Well, this time Pan isn't here. True enough. If I were a wild horse, I wouldn't live in the forest. Oh, yeah? Where would you live? Vancouver? I live in a wild meadow somewhere. Long grass and sheltered by pines. And snow-fed creek running through. Well, there's lots of meadows out there, Gloria. The trick is to find the one with horses in it. <laughs> what are you doing? An old Indian trick. When all else fails, put your ear to the ground and listen for hoof beats. Does it work? Well, now that depends on if the old Indians had their wives nattering in their ears. Would you prefer I sent smoke signals? I bet the Bartons know where they are. But it doesn't look like anybody lives here. Hello, the place! Wow, Rich Hobson, you devil. How you been? We've been better. Uh, Cora, I'd like you to meet my wife, Gloria. Gloria, Cora Bartlett. How do you do? Is everything all right? Well, oh, yeah, we've got a moose down in the willows. Oh, who won? Put your horses up. I'll cut you some steaks. Oh, that's really kind of you, but... We'd love to. Can't you just ask where the horses are? Gloria... You don't get that kind of information by turning down hospitality. Come on. It'll be fine. Meet your neighbors. Oh. 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 <laughs> Mother, get back in bed. You can't greet company from bed. Well, then, let go of him and make yourself useful. 
So, got hitched to some highfalutin city girl and you don't visit no more? Mother. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Bartlett. Gloria? You all right? Yes. Uh, you gotta walk on the stringers. I'm fine. As long as you're down there, throw us up some taters. Nelson. Oh, by your lonesome. Where's Rich? I'm not the man's keeper. And I ain't lonesome. I just come up to get that draw knife back. Don't have it. Robert does. He's building a cabin up at Johnny Lake. You gonna get down off that high horse and have some tea with us Indians? Uh, thanks, but I'd best get up to Johnny Lake. Wait, I've got something for you. Something wrong with Rich? What makes you say that? You look like somebody shot your dog. Do not. Like misery without the company. This one's for Robert. I'll pass it on. Thanks. Smoke trout. Thanks. He's wasting away. Oh, he is not, Mother. That you're cooking? Oh, no, Gloria doesn't cook much. Too fancy to stand over a hot stove, huh? No, oh, she likes cooking just fine. We had to talk her out of it, though. I hope you have other talents. Mother. Enid, you're even meaner when you're sick. You watch your tongue or I'll soap it. You know, with her laid up and all, I haven't been for supplies since November, so if I hadn't got that moose, we would be starving. Doesn't it look like we're starving? Definitely not. Me and my husband come in here with one pack horse, stayed two years. Now there's a wagon road pretty clear the whole way. Mother, you already told Rich this story. People cutting in bed springs and feather pillows and, and wives from Vancouver to throw on them. Would you look at the time? We've imposed on your gracious friends long enough. Local women not good enough for you, Rich Hobson. Mother, if you don't behave, you're going back to bed. I'm rubbing our nose in it. That's what you're doing. You broke her heart. Mother, shut your mouth. It's not true. Talking to me like that. Thanks for the moose. But we really must be going. <clears throat> Yeah, we're uh, horse hunting, so. Uh... through your teeth. Strains out the grounds. Strains out the grounds. Your partner sure has you beat at making coffee. Well, he enjoys domestic life. With his missus, I can understand the appeal. Hmm. Gloria finally run you off the ranch? I'm not a man needs any help running off. Besides, lately I've been thinking about Clean slate. Up that noon anyway. Just me and myself. Reckon I know the feeling. I reckon you do, Robert. Some men is made for the solitary life. Funny thing, though. My own self has been wearing a little thin of me lately.
here. Esther sent smoke trout. <laughs> that was kind of it, all right. How many rooms in that cabin you're building, Robert? Beg your pardon? I said, where's that draw knife at? Oh, I lent it on to Cora Barlow. Gloria, she's a crotchety old lady. Is she senile, too? Did she just imagine something between you and Cora? She's been out in the bush for too long. Why on earth did you take me there? This is supposed to be our anniversary. Look, we're wild horse hunting. If you didn't want to go, then what are we doing here? But it's me. You make up all the rules. First, you forbid talking. Then you drag me off to visit little Miss Loose Meat and her deranged mother. They're our neighbors! Who insult me for an hour while you sit and do nothing. This is what our first anniversary looks like. I'm not sure I want a second. Why do you have to make such a big deal out of everything? I don't have anything I have to apologize for. Here. It's good to know where someone stands. Right. So you want to pack it in or you want to keep going? Well, I might be willing to keep going if you could find so much as a horse apple. Even if I found the horse it came from, it's not like you could help me rope it. So Enid was right. I'm just a trophy from the city. No, no, that's that's not nice true. Nice to look at, but ultimately pointless. All right, look, I, I'm I'm sorry. I, I said I'm sorry. Where are you going? Never mind. You can chase horses till it snows for all I care. We'll just keep on going, partner, all the way to Bat Nimby. Gets that from your mother. Ride all the way to Vancouver for all I care. We'll just ride all the way to Vancouver. Let's see what he thinks of that. Afternoon. Back, are you? What is that? It's coffee. Oh, no. Well, it ain't for you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Right before hand, too. What can I do? Don't do nothing. You stay for supper? Please. Let me help. It was just steaks. I mean, with your mother. She don't need nothing. Cora, I'm not hungry. All right, well, if you have to be getting on. What happened? She was like that when I come back from checking the herd. She scared the bejesus out of me. We should cover her. Is that what you're supposed to do? Maybe you should sit with her first, say your goodbyes. <laughs> Maybe now she'll let me get a word in edgewise. I'll just cover her till you're ready. dead or just drunk so you decided to tag along after all 
marital discord on the trail? No, nothing like that. Only followed one set of tracks up here. Gloria decided to head back. Just didn't take to it. Didn't take to it. Couldn't find them horses, eh? You gonna throw down a bedroll or you just passing through? Better off alone. So now I can run this place my way. Get some pigs in here. I'll tell you what else, I'm gonna take up with the first man who shows up here. That, uh, that Rupert Mowat, he's got pigs and land. I don't think Rupert Mowat is your type. Familiar with my type, then, are you? Familiar enough to know that you've got a better eye than that. Rupert Mowat, good lord. What about a funeral, Cora? There'll be no funeral. No funeral? No. Oh. She said she didn't want nothing. Well, you have to do something. Fine. And after supper, you can help me. We'll drag her out for the wolves. Cora, your mother's not asleep over there. She's dead. And a funeral is not for her, it's for you. If you don't do her a decent service, you'll regret it the rest of your life. I don't need your help to bury my mother. I think you do. Can you dig? Of course I can dig. She goes out back beside father. Has she got a dress? It's her wedding dress. I guess Ma's got to it. You know, when my pa died, it was the middle of winter, and mother had to keep bonfires lit to thaw the ground for his grave. And she's left with a field full of stumps and a three-year-old. Don't know why she didn't just quit. <sighs> well, I reckon I should sit with her a while. This is the life. Fresh mountain air, dew wet grass, and not a single wild horse cluttering up the landscape. Somebody must have scared them off blundering around up here. It's your fault for jinxing us. Jinxing you? Yeah. He said we wouldn't catch a single wild horse. You were right, so go ahead, gloat. Hey, don't blame me if you two had a fight, huh? We didn't have a fight. It's the tiff. Sort of thing goes along with being married. Well, that's what old man Creelman said. Remember that? Creelman was a drunk. Not till Alice pulled out. And they were married 40 years. Well, see, there you go. 40 years to build up steam. Things cool off a lot easier when it's only been a year. Maybe you're right. Of course I am. That episode with old Stump McCandrew doesn't really count, seeing as how it's such a long winter. Stump the Hermit? Didn't start out that way. Old Stumpy kept putting down the tips he was having with his new bride to cabin fever. But then Stump woke up one morning, found himself down one horse with just a cold stove for comfort. And thus you have it. Stump the Hermit. I don't think she'll climb out of that. And there was old Ben Seaver. 
broken down planer man from Williams Lake. Now, granted, they were a high strung couple, but he went up to the mill one Will day. Will you shut up? Threw himself in the chip. Man alive, the hot air in you. You're worse than a Chinook. You don't need to get your shorts in a knot with me, friend. Bad as Gloria. Yakking and yakking. Well, then you did right sending her home. Can't catch wild horses with your jaw flap. Well, I didn't send her home. She rode off. She rode off? Rode off, rode off? You heard me. Well, that does put a different complexion on things. Darn right it does. Doggone it! Two years in a row you ruined this trip. What? Let's go. You gotta go after her. What for? If you don't, she is gonna leave you for good. Well, now what you always wanted? I want her to leave the ranch, not you. You think I want to be stuck with a broken down, moonshine drinking, crying in his underwear cowboy? It's worse than no partner at all. Come on, you fool! I can't cry. I may do it for you. We'll go ahead if you're so inclined. My father was only as old as Rich when he died. <laughs> so the first time I saw Rich, <sighs> he was a sight. All hat, no cattle. Following Pan Phillips around like a blue healer. We had a good laugh on him. <laughs> but he was tough and he was smart and he learned fast. You will too. Did anything go on between you and Rich? Oh. Well, Mother had her heart set on us. But something came along before anything happened. Me. We should get this done. Remember that old boy down in Montana? The one whose lip wouldn't stop twitching? Uh-huh. What was his name? Uh, Twitchy, I don't know. It was Orrin or something. Good cattleman. God's honest truth. When I first met that man, his jaw was so set you could have propped a rifle on it. It was only after his wife ran off that he started... vibrating. What was her name? Sarah? Susan? Gloria? What are you doing? Stop gawking and make yourself useful. Oh, uh, oh, oh, Cora. Our condolences. Oh, well, there's nothing much we can do now. Well, if there's anything we can do for such a fine woman. Well, then get inside and help carry her. No, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Crawl on over top of her. <laughs> Gotta walk on the stringers. As long as you're down there, throw us up some taters. No, we can just slide her down. All right, hop down. What? I'll push from here. Mm. 
ladies. Uh, we're going to be needing your elbow grease. Will you just get her off of me? <clears throat> All right. Uh, you're on it straight. I can't grab it. We're going to need more leverage, Rich. Yo. John, Rich, push. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Oh, back in a jiffy. <laughs> oh, oh, Rich, are you okay? No. No, I'm not okay. You got yourself a good one there, Rich. Thanks so. Well. Yeah, I do. Well, I'm glad you two got a chance to get acquainted. So are we. Have a wake without spirits. It's a mountain fog. <sighs> oh. Wow, well, that's not like beer, is it? No. didn't want a funeral, but uh, some of your friends showed up, so um, this is a this is a real nice spot you picked, and uh, I guess I'm going to be joining you here one day. Right now, i got to work the ranch. Thank you for uh, the cattle, for clearing the land. You know, the house is about to fall down, but uh, down. But uh, the outbuildings are solid, and I got neighbors who can help me. Well, I reckon you were right, Mother. I got a lot easier than you ever did. So. That's it. Oh, no, no, come on now. Start me laughing again. <laughs> You'll let us know if you need any help trailing out your beef? I'll get there, don't worry. After haying, I'll come up to see you. If you like. All right. I'll be all right. Go on. 
Go on. All I wanted was this one day. You're right. You deserve that much. I'm the fool who made him turn around and go after you. Did he really tell you to come after me? He did. Why? Guess he's afraid of throwing myself in the chipper. <laughs> Why? Because he knows how useless I'd be without you. Well, I need to know, too. At least once in a while. Hey. I love you. Once in a while? Most of the while. <laughs> Most of the while? All the while. Pretty much. <laughs> Swell. So, now I have to thank Pam. Hmm. How do you manage that, anyway? All happy again, are we? That's nice. Just a trio of carefree cowpokes. I'm not apologizing for leaving you back at the ranch. I'm not asking. As long as you two keep putting me in the middle, nobody wins. Thanks for turning Rich around, even if you didn't do it for me. Hmm. Well, since I can't run you off, I reckon it's a comfort knowing you can dig my grave. When the time comes, I'll be glad to. Well, you kick off first, I'll do the same. Well, you too, Hush. Make up your mind, Hobson. I mean, we're just starting to get along here. Listen. <sighs> Damn it all, we're unsaddled. Oh, look at them. You see our mare? I see her. She's an awesome. Well, you can count on it. What do you want to do? Saddle up out of sight and get downwind of them. Guys, go ahead. I'll fix supper. Oh, no, you're not cooking. Boots and saddles. Happy anniversary, partner. <laughs>